everyone for joining us this week. We're very happy to have you. I see a lot of familiar faces. So you heard my spiel, but you can hear it one more time. So the reason that we hold this in the library is because the library is committed to the open exchange of ideas and information. And although you may not agree with everything that you hear in this room or that you read outside, we want everyone to have access to it so they can learn from different perspectives. So we take that stance with this series, this weekly series. Um, and so I ask that even if you don't agree with everything that you hear in this room, that you're respectful um, and express your opinion respectfully. So if you are interested in facilitating a topic around something that you're passionate about, please come and talk to either myself or Kelly Beth Henry, who's sitting right over here with me and Kelly. And we can get you on the schedule for it next year. If you'll be here next year, we have students, faculty, staff, and community members who come in. So even if you're gradua graduating, congratulations, we'd be happy to have you back. Okay. And part, can I just add? Yes. And we love student presentations. Yes. We think that's the most exciting thing that's happening in this series. So thank you so much, Nicole, for being here. So today we will be talking about homelessness and critiquing King County's 10-year plan to end it. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the topic, some background information, some more in-depth information, we have a number of books that are available for you to check out um, that are right here. And if you're interested in finding journal articles, magazines, newspapers, anyone who's sitting at the reference desk, which is the big desk in the middle of the library, will be happy to help you find anything else that you'd like. So, before we get started, I'm going to make a plea to you to please grab one of these at the end of today's session and fill out our quick one and a half minutes, or not even two minutes, and let us know what you like, what you didn't like, how we can improve, and how we can keep this useful for you. So, next week, we'll have two students, Valentin Guerra and Robert Beers, who will be leading us in a discussion titled, Modern Education, the Alma Mater of the American Dream, or the Cruel Stepmother of the Social Nightmare, the Roots and Implications of American Compulsory Education. Tonight, one on her note, we will be hosting a beat midnight in the library at 6 p.m. in this room. There will be bongos, poetry, beat snacks, and <laughs> it should be a great time all around. So if you're in the area, Please stop by and check it out. But today, we will have Nicole Martin, who will facilitate a discussion called Homelessness, Critiquing King County's 10-Year Plan to End It. So please join me in welcoming Nicole. Good afternoon, you guys. Thank you for having me. Um, I have a few different topics that I want to talk about today. One is what causes homelessness, um, youth, elderly, um, the 10-year plan that our county plans to put in effect to stop homelessness and some of the programs that are available for people who are homeless. Um, so I'm going to start kind of talking. Feel free, any questions, any comments, any feedback, um, you can stop me. I don't really have to wait until I'm finished. If you agree or disagree, I'm open to hear it. I want to talk about first what causes homelessness. Um, for me, I would say that poverty is a big part of homelessness. An average two-bedroom apartment is about $950 to $1,000. Um, our average minimum wage is about $13. That's not enough. Even if you were a two-parent or two-person household, that minimum wage is not enough to even have a two-bedroom apartment. So um, everybody that does, I'm pretty sure that it's quite hard. Um, Due to, the re due to the recession, a lot of people have been laid off, funds have been cut back, there have been numerous people who were living regular or just living comfortably that went from having a house, having a car, having enough to maintain and live to having nothing and being homeless. Another issue for me would be mental illness. Um, people who have mental illnesses are unable to take care of themselves in many different ways. Um, People experiencing untreated mental illness cannot maintain employment. Um, without employment, it's basically impossible to pay your bills. Um, alcohol and substance abuse, criminal background. You know, a lot of places now, when you go to apply for an apartment, they require 
so much. It's almost like you're filling out something to work in a federal office or something. They run your credit, they run your background check, they run um, past evictions, past all kinds of stuff. So having a criminal background definitely affects being able to get your own place. Um, aging out of foster care. A lot of students or a lot of kids that were in foster care, when they age out, I think it's 18, um, there's basically nothing. Um, if they don't have a job or, you know, they've been dependent on the state and foster care system for so long, then when 18 comes, now it's, what do I do? A lot of them, you know, tend to lean on the streets. Um, leaning on the streets brings up many of the issues that I just mentioned, criminal background, alcohol, substance abuse. Um, when you don't have a stable foundation or family or just just being stable, period, you know, sometimes you feel like you don't have any options and the options tend to be the streets. Um, the recession is affecting homelessness. 1.5 or more million people into homelessness over the next two years. This is according to the National Alliance to End Homeless. In 2008, um, there was a report the U.S. Conference of Major City, a major increase in the number of homelessness. 19 out of the 25 cities surveyed on average cities reported 12% increase of homelessness. So as of right now, it's not looking like it's getting any better. Um, feel free, any questions or any comments or that for me was basically the main issues that um, create homelessness, Bounty. Yeah, you said that an average two bedroom was about eight hundred and ninety dollars. Nine fifty to a thousand dollars. What part facilities. of the city well, is that? Um, really it's kind of well, over here in this part of town, Capitol Hill, it's more than nine fifty. Yeah. That would be further out, maybe Kent, Tuckwilla, South Auburn, Auburn, Federal Way. It gets yeah. cheaper as we go south. Yes. But even with that figure, um, that does not include utilities. It doesn't yeah. it, it does not include utilities, it does not include food, it does not include yeah. nothing yeah. but the rent. Right, exactly. And and that's the further we go out is nine fifty. To live in Seattle, which is close to everything as far as our school, local to downtown Seattle. I mean, I've seen a one bedroom studio. I've seen a studio that was $1,100. Yep. Yep. And if you're only making $13 an hour. Okay. Yes. Now, you make uh, the minimum wage, would you say that nationally or just is that $13 well, nationally? Well, Washington has the highest minimum wage, and that figure was. Now, isn't it? Right, but I think it says the typical renter wage is just thirteen ninety six. So that's not our minimum wage, right. but it's an average of what the majority of people right, okay. right get paid. Yeah. Right. Yes. All that and homelessness is kind of funny because you see how Washington is the like the twenty first biggest city in the United mm -hmm. States. The we have the fastest growing. We're the fastest growing city in the United States since last year with like 19,000 people in there. Mm -hmm. In Seattle today, there's like 35,000 people that are homeless living on the streets, mm -hmm. and that's what they counted with the, with the um, uh, ambassadors. They're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to fix the homeless population because Seattle's their 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 climate is perfect for homelessness. People are coming from out of state, out of state people live in states, telling other people they're coming here because this is a, this is a place for homeless people. What Seattle has to do about this homelessness is not. They're not going to end it, but what they need to do is try to accommodate them. Like, say, down in Occidental Park. You have some like 300 people down there. You got about nine porta parties sitting there, but only one of them is for the homeless people. Right. They got they got places for them to eat, but they don't have enough places. They built a, a homeless tent city over here on Jackson, right next to a school. Right. Instead of them building a building where they have full fledged kitchens and bathrooms and guards and place for them to sleep and match for them to sleep inside. You're, you're never going to end homeless, homelessness in Seattle. It's going to do nothing but grow because Seattle is doing nothing but grow. Right, and we see it every day. We walk out of school and we'll see kids in the park, kids on the corner. And, and it, to me, it seems like the generation of homelessness is getting younger. Yes. yes. Um, I definitely like to agree with Carl since I can kind of end it. Uh, but I also think that 
you know, Seattle is so lucky in the sense of there is, we have the highest amount of resources for homelessness in any uh, state nationwide. Um, and people have actually, in London, well, taken a look at this model that's in effect right now, the comprehensive plan to prevent and end youth and homelessness, and just regular homelessness in general. Uh, and I think that, you know, yeah, we have the highest number, but we also have like the highest amount of people doing something about it, but there's still a lot of them. You know, you take transitional housing programs, that's a waiting list that you'll be on for a year, two years. Right, you know, the average one year, year is five to seven years. Yeah, five to seven years, and you know, you take something like that into consideration, people are gonna give up and turn to the streets. But I think like where this plan kind of falls is that we have really good resources for homelessness. Mm -hmm. So you know, like you can go get a care pack, you can go get- That's just for the right now. Yeah, that but- That just takes care of that thing. Right, right. I'm just saying, like, I think that there's a good like setting there, but what we need to actually work on is stay up. Because right. we have half of the math finished, so we can just call it every other side. Yeah. Yeah. By way of comparison, it's interesting, I think, to know, uh, George Orwell's first published book, Down and Out in Paris and London, completed in 1932, that depression said, I mean, he doesn't say where he gets his figures, that in all of England, uh, a country of 40 million, there were maybe 40,000 homeless people tramping up and down. 40,000 in a country of 40 million. So we have 35,000 in just Seattle alone. Right. Uh, yes, sir. I was going to say, uh, I was talking to one of my classmates yesterday, and he said Oregon has almost like zero um, homeless people because he said the Mormon church, what they do when they get the money from the Mormon church, they don't put it to the church, they put it out to the community to make sure that they can hear that. Now, I'm from Philadelphia, but I haven't seen a lot of vacant houses around here. I'm sure that they exist. I'm not really sure. Not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. No, because when they become vacant, they're immediately, not immediately, but faster than other places, bought out or torn down, down or yeah. we don't give the vacant house the opportunity to become somewhere for the homeless people to go and it's shack up or it's quiet out or yeah. you know they don't they don't last that long. Because I was looking at something the other day. It might have been the advertising of this. I said, why do you have to have a ten year plan though to to get rid of something that is really devastating? Mm -hmm. Because when I came here from the East Coast. I never thought about homelessness. It's always been a place to live with. Well, I got here, my plans didn't turn out like they were supposed to turn out. And it got really interesting because I realized I was working in some action at the time and had to move, or, you know, that wasn't good where I was. And I said, you know, this is crazy. I had nowhere to go. No, and, and, at one, and at that point, the reality is, well, at least you have a car and you have a roof over your head. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, okay, I can drive somewhere and maybe sleep here and still go to work. So I want to keep working. Mm -hmm. But it was really insane. And I think when you look at something like homelessness, it gets into this, how this whole country is structured. Because we have so much money, we're not taking, for, and this, I'm sure they have their reasons, but how can you not take care of people without a home? Right. And like she said, we, this, state that has some of the best resources, resources ever. Yes. I don't think that come from all around the world. Yes. Just like when Hurricane Katrina, they came to Seattle. You know, they yes. didn't go to anywhere else. They went to Dallas, to Seattle. Um, for us to have so many resources and so much help and so much this and that, why do we have so many homeless people? And yet they have a program for it. I'm not against it. And then, uh, and I'm, I'm for immigration, definitely. But yet they have programs that help the immigrant population come. So if you can help them come, and you can do for them, why can't you do more here? And I just don't quite understand it. Now, I don't need to understand it, but they have their own mindset, and their own rules, and their own agendas for things. Exactly, very good, very good. So when you say immigrant, do you mean refugees? Yeah, because that, they are our programs for help. My question is, do you, is, has anyone done any study that breaks down the different causes of homelessness in the population here? Very good. No, but you know, when I think about it, some of it's like common sense. Not even so much common sense, but some of it, the research is almost not needed. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, yeah, and I, I know all those points and people have done research on that, but I'm wondering if within this population, if we know, like, how many people 
or ex-felons, and could we address that problem right. individually and, and, and other problems individually to help uh, bring down the level of um, As far as what you just said, for an example, to me, um, the youth that are homeless, with a lot of them, I believe that they come from unstable homes. I believe that there was no structure. There might be just the mom and not the dad, or the dad was just and not the mom, and there was no rule. There wasn't really any type of um, what's the word I'm looking for. There was no there was no structure. So they did what they want, and then they didn't go to school, and now they're of age, and the parents might kick them out, and they have no education to get a job, and so they just hang out. Yeah, um, she, she said something about an ex-felon. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as an ex-felon. You're still a felon. You're still a felon. Right. So, so like, you know, you're still a felon and you're still discriminated right. against even though you committed the crime. You did. I did that. Right. I paid did my that. debt to society. So still being I did that. Yeah. And now, I think I, we need to address that problem in very society. Good. Very good. Very good. And it's not just that. Uh, you know, you... I came to a point in my life, the things that I used to do, I don't do those things anymore. So do those things that will shape you right now? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I think oftentimes we, we talk about homelessness and feels a society as if it's something new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's really been going on forever, really. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's just, it, it, what, what uh, seems to really stand out though is that we're affected by it now, so that makes it stand out. So, so my real question is this, what are the points of uh, King County's uh, plan to end this homelessness? I mean, I don't think they, they, they will, but what, is the, what are the points? Yeah. Sure. Um, I was just trying to, uh, I'm sorry, when you said about ex felon and he also said, I, um, it's like they, it's almost like you have to go to jail or be, you know, just even start to even get any kind of housing. Like I have a girlfriend who just left Purdy, and you know, she, you know, I'm asking her about because I recently just got housing after eight years. So eight years. you know what I'm saying? I have two kids, and so I'm asking her. Here she's on her way out of prison, and she's talking about this program out in uh, uh, Maple Valley. I'm renting it that way. So I'm like, twenty-one dollars or seventy-five, whatever it is. I don't care what it was. I'm ready to jump on it. Right. You have to have uh, just been getting out of prison to get. Are you kidding me? So it's yeah. like, it catch two. I just, yeah, so I just want to say that. Yeah, they, and they need to keep those prison beds. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I can just go to prison just so I can get a place to live. Okay. Now, yeah, there's there's, there's kids, programs then, now that yeah. are just for people that are just released from prison. Yes, and they get everything. Um, there's a lot of programs now for men that have just been released from prison to post get, prison. Right. Post prison education. There's funds for them. There's funds everywhere. Housing, there's, you know, it's almost like you have to be in a, you can't just be yeah, home, you have to be in a certain That's category. how they make their money. Right. Yes. I was reading um, on Downtown Emergency Services Center, the research that they've been doing. I feel like they did a research about how the majority of homeless, like chronically homeless people we love that have been out there for a long time. They use most of the services, such as jail and emergency rooms, during the winter. And they spoke about how the the way to solve that was to get housing first, which is where, you know, there's no, like, what is it, the word that I'm looking for? There's no conditions. Yeah. And I feel like that would be a really great way to start. Like, what do you mean no conditions? Harm reduction. It used to yeah. be that the, if you were alcoholic, for instance, you had to be commit to sobriety to get housing. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the models they've been looking at. That's good. That's a good model. Because addiction plays a major role in a major percentage of the homelessness. Yeah. It, it really does. A major role from the young. I know 14, 15-year-old kids that are heroin addicts. They're addicted. They've been addicted for three, four years. And it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's just, and it, it's just, it's scary, but uh, bottom line, they have to address that and teach young people and middle-aged people that what you're doing, the addiction, what you're involved in, you can't 
have normalcy. There is no normalcy. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then you have the addict. That's a lawyer, a doctor. Right. Woo -dee -woo -dee -woo. He's a functioning yeah. addict. Exactly. Can, can hold the job down. Can have $150,000, $200,000 in the bank. Send the kids to college. So it's, it's uh, yeah, addiction plays a major role in our society. Last summer, I went down and lived with the homeless. I did like, six or seven months. You know, I asked a lot of questions. I did a lot of paperwork. I did a lot of research on them. And a lot of the homeless people want to be homeless. It's their housing, by giving them housing. I'm going to interrupt you. Can I ask you where? You said you went to the hospital. Hospital Park, okay. PSSC. Oh, here in Washington, yeah. Yeah, right. um, St. Martin's, mm -hmm. the Senior Citizens, Lorenzo's mm -hmm. Club. Mm -hmm. I went to all, I lived in all them places. I went down there specifically just to do that. I lived as they did, the way they did, I, I ate the way they did, I, I got clothes the way they did, and then talk to them, become friends with them, watch them come in and out of the city. A lot of them guys don't want housing. Some of them get it, a month later, they're right back in the streets. And then in the house, and then we say homeless, because there's a big old circle when you say homeless. Because inside the circle is also eating. The way they the way they have to eat, and, then, and there's not enough places for them to eat. They may get their food stamps, but they're not getting no meat, they're not getting the nourishment that they need. Now, when they get their food stamps, they should have some kind of program where they can trade their food stamps in for cash. Some of them need cash, get bus fare, and all this stuff, and they're not getting any money. Some of them need that cash so they can go to McDonald's. If they don't love to eat, they McDonald's with food stamps, that would help them a lot too. But homelessness is a big, big, big circle. It's mm -hmm. not just not having a house and not no place to live. Because right. most of them don't want their place to live. Why? They'd rather Why? live out in the streets. That's right. No responsibility. They can do as they please. You can go down to Huntsville Park right now, especially since the sun's up. I guarantee you there's about 300 people there. Right. Also, like, are you coming from the streets personally? Because mm -hmm. I finally got nothing. Mm -hmm. I actually went back out to the streets because of public opinion. Oh, that's right. Because when you're right. you're so cool. Out the door, down the hallway, to a restroom in a 
shelter facility that I was no longer in. When you have your own. Uh, obviously, I, I shook that off, and I, after that, it was my apartment. Right. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in subsidized housing, here's the, here's the problem. It's good because it gets people off the streets and puts a roof over their head. But check this out. A lot of people that I meet in there, everybody's thrown into the same mix, mm -hmm. same ball game. Mm -hmm. You got mentally ill, you got medium income, low income, no income. Okay, they're all in there. But what I noticed in living there over two years now is that um, they're showing a lot of the same habits mm -hmm. as when they were in the shelter home because there's really nothing to uh, subvert that, okay, to kind of uh, enhance their quality of life. The, the one thing that does happen is this, is that now they're subject to institutional policy. If you make too much money, the rent goes mm -hmm. up, okay, and the food stamps go down. Mm -hmm. So now you're mm -hmm. you're spinning your wheels trying to say, okay, what do I do? Okay, even the very fact that I'm going to school here now, mm -hmm. okay, as a veteran now, I qualified for VRAP, but I have to be unemployed mm -hmm. in a shop. I mean, in subsidized housing. However, in subsidized housing, I couldn't be a full-time student. Right. Mm -hmm. So I that was a little battle I fought for three or four months, not really knowing. And of course, I remain. But those are the kind of things that people experience even now. Yeah. That's those are the challenges. I experienced something like that. Um, mm. In order to get the full financial aid, you have to be a full time student. Right. I live by myself, and I work full time. My rent is eight hundred dollars, and I have a one bedroom apartment that might be all of that big. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. I have to go to work full time because I have nobody to help me with my bills. Okay. It barely just, I don't even make $13. I make $11.50 an hour. That barely pays my bills. I have to pick which bill is going to be more important this month to pay. Awesome. Um, as far as, so before I started working, I was getting food stamps. I got $200 in food stamps. But when I started working, it went to $13. <laughs> what am I going to do with that? So now I don't get any food stamps because I have this job, which is what you guys wanted to happen. But this job does not pay for food because it barely pays the rent. Cash I can't get the full yeah, financial exactly. aid without being a full-time student, exactly. which I need. But I work full-time. So, you know, it's... Well, you know, let, let me bring a stereotype here of the homelessness. Uh, three years ago, when I was in shelter home, I had to work at Macy's when the economy went down. Now you make eight and a half an hour back then. Mm -hmm plus your commission if you're in sales, okay? I work right alongside double mattress threes, mm -hmm. PhDs, uh, yeah, well. teacher of teachers now. Uh, so let me, let, me, let me break that little myth of homelessness being people that don't have enough uh, education yeah. level or right. whatever. And yes, it's true. Some people out on the streets would rather live out there mm -hmm. than to subject themselves to this yeah. craziness. It's like right. freedom. And then, yeah, it does suck out there, but uh, you offset it by, hey, I have a little peace of mind. Yeah, Some okay. people out there are sitting up house Underneath a bridge with a little TV and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, and yeah. they're content. And I know that because I used to do search and rescue. And they got to say, everybody, everybody in here is only one paycheck away from being homeless. Yeah. That's yes. right. Well broke. Yes. That's yeah. right. And that's true. What he just said. Right. Oh, that's straight. You made me sound like I forgot what I was going to say. That's right. Um, So talking about um, like addiction and stuff and how, you know, and housing and whatnot, um, kind of to put in a different perspective, I was hospitalized um, in my, right, right before my junior year in a hospital for self-harm and suicide. And a lot of people in the hospital um, who were my age, I just turned 18 a couple days ago, and um, a lot of people who were in there were, you know, younger than me mm -hmm. or my age coming in coming down from a couple drugs at a time and they were drunk as well and it was just a mess and the thing is you know you talk to them and you kind of get to know people there because you don't really want to be alone there you don't you don't want to be sitting by yourself when you're trying to feel better you know and you'll talk to them and you'll and I found out that every single person in my group of about 20 or so None of them, this is a facility meant, you know, made for, you know, like part of the facility was made for people who were underage. But every single person in my group of 20 besides me was there because they were, you know, they didn't have a home and they were reoccurring. They were coming back and coming back and coming back. 
it's like, you know, if you're 17 and you're addicted to, you know, a lot of different things and, you know, and you're continuously just coming back to a hospital, you know, because, you know, you're found out on the street laying there and, you know, shaken and you're continuously coming back for months and months at a time, what happens when you turn 18? You know, you're an adult now. But that's know? what you know still, so it's almost kind of what you continue to do. Yeah, and it's exactly, it's like, and then, then the only thing that would change for you is that instead of being with, you know, like, I'm, you know, people who are underage, you would go into, you know, the adult portion. You know, what happens to people who don't have families like that? You know, I was in there for, you know, a little while, but I, cause I continuously think of the friends I made with the people, you know, that they, they would come in and they would be there for about a month or so, maybe, and they would, you know, slowly come off and, you know, relax and then leave and then be back there a month later because, you know, that's, it was the only, it was basically their routine. And it was just terrible to see because it's, it's not only just the fact that, you know, it's where would they go, it's just that, they're so young, and for anybody, the human body is such a delicate, careful thing. You know, we are so smart and so intelligent, and we have come so far, but we have to remember that, you know, it's not just, you know, making sure that, you know, you're safe, but that you're safe. You know, and some of those services, if you go in there and you're coming down from something, it's just fling them back out on the streets, and it's just, no. You, you, the, Kind of also talking about how you guys were saying um, about once you you know go into housing, it's you know it's hard to adjust. Then you know if you are continuously going into a um, mental home, mental place to come down from you know like something <coughs> in your system, and then suddenly you have a house, <coughs> it's could be very jarring for somebody who's trying to come down from addiction and change their entire way. Of that's why certain people um, commit petty crimes just to go to jail, just, just to, to, back to get days. somewhere to sleep right. tonight, just to get the, right. the hot and the cot and the right. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it'll, it'll be a petty crime, so they'll be released, but then they'll commit another one because they're homeless, especially in the winter. Somebody ever Yes. Hi. <coughs> I, I just wanted to add a, a couple things, and maybe some of this was mentioned before I got here. But uh, on the topic of uh, several people have mentioned, um, the use of the high prevalence of drugs among the homeless, and um, and there's also a high um, incidence of mental illness, and so a lot of people are um, self self medicating. They're on drugs because that is a way to deal with their mental illness because they don't aren't don't have other means to deal with it. Also, um, statistically, um, I don't know what portion of the homeless population foster kids are, but in the foster, former foster kid population, a very high percentage of them end up being homeless. Mm -hmm. And at 18, they get um, bounced out of the system because um, unless they're with really, really nice people who want to continue to help them, uh, those people are not going to continue to get paid by the state for caring for them. And they mm -hmm. often don't have the life skills they need to, uh, to survive on their own. Well, one thing, I, I, this is a great discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Um, but one thing I hope each of us can go out of here with is to influence other people. When we talk about this problem and we talk about the people, to say people who are homeless. And the reason I feel rather than the homeless, because I think if we say the homeless, then we're thinking about this huge group of people, not individuals that we could care about as an individual, first of all. Also, the main characteristic that they have is that they're homeless. But each person who's homeless is, you know, a good singer, left-handed, tall, short, a great sense of humor, you know. That's what's really important about that person. And if we first think about the fact that they're homeless, then I mean, I think this is what this whole culture has done, is kind of put these people together and think, oh, they're them, we it's, a, it's a yes. problem. They yeah, so that's them. what I want to suggest, yes. that we just start saying people who are homeless and, and let other people know, hey, try the word people who are homeless instead of the homeless. Thank you for listening. Um, I would just like to say that, you know, um, I've been homeless before, mm -hmm. and 
that was a direct result of my actions and what I accepted and the way I wanted to live. I think it's very important for three-year-olds, the four-year-olds, the five-year-olds, the six-year-olds, and on up. I think it's because when I was growing up, I wasn't homeless. My dad was a soldier, my mom was a secretary. So they provided a home. My granddad did the same thing for his. You see what I'm saying? So you're right, it's the fa first it's the family breakdown. It's the breakdown of the family. Okay, and then and then and then the fact that say you have a mom and dad that, that want to provide for you, but where's the job? Right. Where's the job? You see, so I think it has to start really early as far as this 10-year. It needs to start really early with the education to the kids. You know, take your eye off of, of the commercials, buy this, buy that. If money is used, should be used for necessities and not wants. Like that has to be well, taught. But how, how meaningful is education if there are people who have some of the highest education possible? Well, I'm not talking about education of, I'm not talking about the education of a piece of paper or a degree. I'm talking about the education of what is life skills, priorities, discipline, right. these type of things that right. we're lacking. But I want to say another thing, um, really brief, um, and that was, uh, yeah, you said something about people uh, that go to jail and eat, yes. have six months and a place to live, three hots and a cop, we call it. Yes. But the taxpayers getting tired of that one. Right, Lord. Your taxpayers yeah, fed up with that. All, you can commit a petty crime today and not get arrested at all. You'll Drugs too. Yeah, you'll get Drugs too. You'll have a court date, but you yeah. will not see the county jail. People tired of that. The taxpayer pays for that. Right. I was yeah. going to say to kind of get it back to like that use of drugs and stuff. Um, when you are like a homeless youth or young adult, you know, like that's my perspective at least. When you're on the streets, mm -hmm. that becomes your family. And right. right. Your family right. does, you start to do. So, you know, you shoot up heroin, you start to speed because you don't want to go to bed. You don't want to sleep under that fridge because you don't want to know what's going to happen to you. And then you start to do these drugs mm -hmm. to kind of not live in the reality that you're living in. And then, you know, you get housing and you're stuck with that addiction. And that's what, I, you know, a lot of, I think, my peers has happened to them. You know, I was lucky enough not to fall into that. But I've seen a lot of things, you know. and. Also, with this plan, you know, I'm actually on the board for it, so oh, I know it like the back of my hand, um, but it actually hasn't been going on for 10 years. It it's hasn't? been going on for 20. It's so this plan kind of, you know, like they announced it 10 years ago, but they started incognito designing it 10 years prior. And uh, their biggest pull was actually from youth and young adults and kind of taking that information and saying, hey, how do we get kids off the streets and how do we, you know, you know, theft when you're like younger and homeless isn't for life to steal to go to jail. It becomes like this normal thing as I don't have a meal, I'm gonna take that sandwich. Not because you wanna take that right. sandwich, but because you wanna eat. You wanna eat <laughs> right. But you get seen as a criminal. Right. And that's where stereotypes come in. When you talk about the mentally ill being on the streets homeless, you know, you know, we had that we had that facility, Western State. Western State closed their doors. Right. When they closed yeah. their doors, they put all the people on the street. They didn't, they didn't give these people no yes, place to go. Did. They just put them on the street. They the last person out, shut the door. <laughs> and they had to get around. That's what they did. And that's why, <laughs> that's, that's why the majority of the mentally ill are on the street. Because Westville, Westville was a big facility. Now there's no Westville, but they got a bunch of them on the streets. And it's interesting, too, because in one of my classes, I think you're in that class, you look at how um, different administrations, like the president and all that, which is a figurehead. But however, different things happen under different um, so they look at a situation and they see it. And I'm saying, and, and I'm with you, Nicole, because there's something I was reading, and I said, why do you have to have, spend all that time and money on a program to figure out what is very clear and very basic? So what game are you playing? Okay, boom. But you know, they've just done things. They've done things knowing I'm going to take that away. Well, because there's a reason behind it. I don't really know the whole reason behind it, but I know they're not looking at people. I really believe they're looking at dollars and money. And these prison little programs that they have for the people getting out of prison now, and hey, that's really good, I and mean, hey, go for it. As long as they use it and get finished with it, because who knows when they're gonna take that away? Right. Oh, the elements, because they, 
but they do like the Kent City people. I remember in Sky with Dad, you know, people over there, me and my sister would go and take them food and stuff like that. Come over the next week, it's done. Mm -hmm. They would shut it down. Well, they're trying to do something for themselves. They had the little security also in the central area behind them. And so A and PM mm -hmm. shut down, put the gate around mm -hmm. them. I mean, it's like you don't want to help them. They're trying to help themselves. I mean, can they get what? I mean, the lot's not being used. They're not doing papers. anything with this. I mean, yeah, how do you shuffle? Shuffle the papers for the program, you know, because there's maybe this X amount of money allotted for this particular thing. Okay, great, let's create some programs. This was this much money. Do, 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 do. Okay, where did it go? Now, remember, it had all that big tragedy, and everybody poured all that money, and it was years ago, it was on the East Coast. Then they said, Oh, well, you know, they have all this money, but they haven't disseminated because they don't know how. So, what are you talking about? So I think they put they they, they have this in which they create social needs. Now my supervisor told me a very long time ago, which really made me think about something. He said, you know, what do you think this is supposed to work? And I'm working with you and I'm linking their families, no, they're re entering back into society. I said, Well yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm not making that much money. He said, I'll tell you right now, if you come in here thinking these programs are supposed to work, you're wrong. He said, as long as we have people like our clients, we're going to always have a job. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah, tough way to look at something. Just to kind of say something about the tent city and why they, from my perspective, why they don't last as long as we would like to see them there, mm -hmm. community plays a big part in that. In right. certain areas, if we have a group of all of these homeless people that are judged, you know, they could be homeless because they lost their job. They might not be on drugs. They might not have any illness or anything, but they're homeless just because of a misfortune. It might be a community where they feel like it's unsafe with their kids. You know, it might be a bad look for the community. Um, so it's not it, it's not so much that they they can't be there because of the lot or the vacancy, but just how the community might come together and vote against it. Or I think that's what happened with the tent city behind the AMP and why that wasn't able to stay there. And um, I kind of want to talk about the 10-year plan a little bit. Um, Valentine had asked earlier, what are some of the points that they, or King County per se, is trying to come up with to prevent it? Um, so I got this off of um, what are we doing in King County for homelessness? Some of uh, the key elements that they have on here um, to prevent homelessness, they will try to make sure that appropriate housing and support services are available. Um, services that include rent, utility, job training, education assistance. When I first read that, I said to myself, well, that, all that stuff is available now. Yes, you're yeah. right. So, I mean, okay, well, whatever. You know, this is the first thing I thought, like, this is available now. They're still homeless. Mm -hmm. Something else that they talked about, um, we will place homeless people as quickly as possible in permanent housing and then help them to stabilize and function on their own by providing them the supportive services they need. Well, why is the wait list still five to seven years if you're placing people as quickly as possibly as you can? The funding. Mm -hmm. So, that's another, you know, I'm just reading this like, uh, okay. Um, something else we talked about, build the public and political will to end homeless. We must expand our community's commitment to ending homelessness by educating the public, tracking our success, and building on them. This to me would be educating the public on homelessness. I feel like we all kind of have the same attitude on what it already is. I don't know how this class particularly is going to prevent people from being homeless. I mean, this is educating us on why and what are some of the reasons, and you know, just for us to not be judgmental to people that are homeless because you never know their situation. But I don't want to see how, I mean, maybe like the gentleman that had left said, educating them younger on the values and, you know, priorities and what's more important. Is it important for you to go buy some shoes or is it important for you to pay this bill? Just as a, a teenager or a child, you know, to get in that mindset that, you know, as a res responsible, person, you know, you put certain things first. Something else they talked about, the increase, increase the efficiency of the existing programs, existing systems. We are restructuring systems to be more efficient, coordinating services, and streamlining rules and regulations for both providers and clients. Who's we? King County. King County, and King County would be what? City Council, anybody involved in leadership positions? I'm assuming because it just says, it just said King County, we as King County. So I'm assuming it's the administrators and the city council and, you know, whoever else is on board that makes the decisions 
to. Yeah, he has a directive for homelessness. Right. So sure. Everybody got to Yeah, because she made it. Right. <laughs> and then, um, you, you the started, last thing, you, you, you started to, uh, to allude to this uh, a few minutes ago when the predominant lecture. You're talking about education. Okay, we get that. We've mm -hmm. been hearing about education for decades. So but if there's no job what, after we uh, get our... What kind of education? Right. Okay, and where does this education originate? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, values. Right. I mean, uh, we've been really uh, taught a lot about independence, interdependence, but we rarely hear about interdependency. We talk about a lot about dependency, though, right. which is what a lot of homeless people are. Yeah. There was one more point that they had on here, um, and then I can get to you. The last thing that they said, <laughs> I don't mean the last thing, but it's just, I don't, you know, I don't know if we're supposed to understand it. I'm kind of glad that I was being a part of this class because I'm still confused. Even after the class, we have 10 more minutes left, and I'm still confused, you know? They say, <clears throat> measure and report outcomes. We will chart the funds coming into our homelessness system and show that the money is being spent and produce reports to the public on the achievement of our goals and objectives. Now, I don't know if they're doing that to show whoever funded this, whoever funded that, that this worked, that this is what we did with the money, continue, you know, keep it coming, or, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I feel like this the stuff, the couple bullets that I got off of, on the internet on their goal to prevent homelessness, the 10-year plan. I feel like this is stuff that's happening right now. I don't see what 10 years is gonna do if you know with these same plans that are current, so. Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, you know, when you do sign up for your, like me, I'm gonna do the two on, two on one to mm -hmm. you know, do that with all the resources mm -hmm. are. No. But, um, I remember them calling me back from Monica's place up here on 23rd, and uh, they were like asking me all these questions. Okay, I'm homeless. What else do you need to know? Wait, where'd you sleep? Where were you at? What did you eat? Okay, and I could see oh, an average person getting, you know, frustrated with that. Well, hell, if you want to know, you don't just hang up. It's like it's like another catch-22. It's like most people don't want to. Do you got it for me or not? You kind of already right. got your it's kids on going through it's everything. And, I'm homeless. What else do you want to have kids? See this? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's just, I don't know. It's frustrating. Yeah, it's yes, it's very frustrating. Can't wait to leave so, so one of the things that I've been wondering for a long time is how many you know students who actually go to Seattle Central are homeless yeah. right now, yeah, just you know, walking just among us. <laughs> And how many students here need social services that they're not getting that will help them persist through their education to achieve whatever their goals are? And there happens to be a student named Eddie Perry. I don't know if any of you know him. Uh, he's in the bachelor's program in applied behavioral sciences. And he is, has done a survey, and he's asking people to fill out the survey. It's only five questions, your yes or no questions. And I'm wondering if I could just pass this out to, to you. You could just leave me. You don't need to put your name on it. Um, but he would really appreciate your feedback. And what's he going to do with the information? He is going to propose. He is working with the president. He wants to propose that the college actually, through the ABS program and uh, social and human services um, and the health um, Related programs that they provide services on campus. Oh, he wants to open that building back there. He does. He wants to open that building back there. So That's he awesome. has a grand idea. He's awesome. just trying to gather information. Awesome. Is that right? Open the building. Thank you. He wants to. The uh, North End, and you can give me the portal. Oh, that's Thank you. 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 Thank Yeah. 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 Are there any other questions or comments that you would like to say? We're going to wrap it up for people. I just got one last little comment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
you know, they got a 10 year plan to end homelessness, which is never going to end. But what they actually should be trying to do is to improve the condition of the homeless people. Now, what would you say there? You said they get the food stamps, so where they going to, if you buy, where can you buy food, they go to Yeah, I think they need to be, they need to think about that another way. And I'm sure they have, but it's more beneficial probably to do that way if you want to have to change it. Yes, yeah, Nicole, uh, I think you began to kind of give us a little piece of puzzle. You pointed us to the, uh, the where the solution could begin to be, and that is when you said the word system. The, system. the problem is systemic. It, uh, it, it isn't independent of other things. It's part of a bigger system of systems. And I think when you said what we're learning here, and then like what can we do with it, that was a very interesting thought in my mind. Is it because maybe some of us who are so inclined could put together a spiel and go to, and ask for speaking time at different community centers, ask for speaking time at your school. Just so you get it. So you guys want to talk to the board. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do want to talk to the board. Yeah, right now. I love it. No, because you know, like, even in your high schools. Because I think parents also need to be educated. Some of the parents I've So you need to take these type of conversations to the high schools where they're younger to start with these type of conversations. Yeah, and get some kids when you see poverty. And also, young with the whole family and child and family. Because they do that have experience with being on drugs or being homeless. And also talk to those parents who are doing this. I love things. this kind of stuff. I would love to come and talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. She's in my class, so I want to death with her. Thank you. Let her know I will see her. That's my little girl. But um, I need information so that I can be able to talk with you. Okay, let me go finish this. Let me turn off this camera.